John Morant injured his left knee on this play, and in this video, we're gonna try and take a closer look at what exactly might have happened here. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. To be clear up front here, I did not see a clear and obvious mechanism for any specific knee injury. But there are some general things we can talk through here, and so we'll try to at least dive into those. First things first here, from this view, as Jaws driving in, you know, initially it looks like his left foot kind of drags on the ground here. Nothing too out of the ordinary for his playing style. Then as he kind of plants and steps, a lot of people were wondering if there was a little bit of kind of inward shift of his knee right here as he kind of went to change directions and back out. Of course, when we talk about that inward shift of the knee, people worry about an ACL tear. And then of course, as he kind of pushed off here is when he first kind of held up. So then people wondered, gosh, this is a left leg. Could it be his Achilles, whatever. Now we of course know it's his left knee so we can hone in on that a little bit more specifically. So this part where people thought his knee went inward a little bit, kind of right there, there's this ever so subtle shift. And we hear of course, non-contact, people associate non-contact knee injuries with ACL tears. And so that was kind of a lot of people's fear going around Twitter. But I will say the knee here is flexed, meaning if we look at kind of the angle of his knee, it's bent as opposed to being out straight in extension. Generally an ACL tear occurs more so when the knee is in an extended position as opposed to this amount of flexion. Usually when the knee is this extensively flexed, we're more likely to see something like an MCL tear than an ACL. Also with a non-contact ACL tear, there's usually at least some component of forward movement in the plane where the tibia wants to translate forward, which is part of what overloads that ACL. Now with a contact ACL tear, whenever we see just an impact come into the side of the knee, of course we don't have forward movement, but these non-contact things, usually it's when guys are going forward and cut to change directions, there's at least some forward component that is kind of translated through that ACL. Now again, none of this means that an ACL tear is impossible here in the situation. It certainly is on the differential, just want to talk you guys through a little bit of what kind of we think about watching a play like this. Anytime we see a little bit of that kind of pivot, that little shift on a flex knee in particular, have to think about the meniscus being torn. Of course, the menisci are these two little cushioning pieces of cartilage that sit inside the knee. Whenever the knee is flexed, in particular, kind of the back portions of the meniscus get loaded. And then when you twist those bones, you can cause some shear. So a little bit of a kind of pivot there, twist on a flex knee have to think about the meniscus. And then the other thing too, I'll be honest, is Jaw was coming in right there where his left foot kind of scrapes along the court. I also think about the possibility of a patellar subluxation or dislocation where the kneecap wants to, in kind of this position right here, pop outward, kind of lateral, which can of course be quite painful. Now, the next kind of clue, I guess you could say we got here was when Jaw was here on the sidelines, he was almost like trying to push his knee back in, kind of pushing on the outside of his knee downward like he felt like something was maybe out of place here. As this continues, we can see it's like he's rubbing on kind of the inside of the knee, almost like that's the area where he's sore. And of course that MCL is the ligament that runs north to south on the inside of the knee. We can't really see it on his left knee, but if we look on the right knee, the MCL is kind of running in this direction, as opposed to on the outside of the knee, the LCL is kind of running like this. So again, doesn't really mean anything 100%, but oftentimes when players hurt, they kind of rub or localize to the area of the injury. So the fact that number one, he was kind of pushing on the outside of the knee, again, makes me think about that possibility with the patella subluxing a little bit, but also rubbing on the inside possibility of the MCL. And now what I think is the most important angle, and we didn't see this until the start of the second half, but if you remember from the previous ones, I was worried about how much the knee potentially went inward as he sort of went to change directions there. So now we can see perfectly in this kind of frontal plane how much that knee is gonna go in or out. And you can see here as he plants, it really doesn't budge. We don't see that knee collapse inward at all here. Of course, if we did see that knee collapse inward here, that would raise concern for an ACL. Now the foot being pointed outward a little bit externally rotated is part of the position that can lead to an ACL tear, but it's reassuring in this view to see that there was no significant collapse of that knee inward because of course that's one of these positions that can kind of load the ACL in a way that can lead to an injury. And I will say too, in this view, it certainly doesn't look like his kneecap is out of place. So I don't think it would have actually dislocated, maybe subluxed a little bit, but certainly doesn't seem like it was popped out here as it looks like we can see it pretty clearly in the front of the knee. And so this step right here is really what I would probably put at the top of my differential where jaw kind of comes through the lane and that left foot grabs on the court. And as this occurs, 
it's gonna be stretching that inside portion of the knee, which is where that MCL lives. Again, where he was rubbing when he was on the sideline. So that's certainly one possibility that I could see with all this. Another part of this jog came back out on the bench at the start of the second half and he wasn't on crutches, which is certainly a good sign, but doesn't exclude anything like an ACL tear or a bad MCL tear. The only reason you would have to be on crutches in that situation is if you had a lot of pain with walking around, you were limping walking around, or the doctors were worried about a piece of the meniscus that was torn and actually flipped, causing the knee to lock in place. So it's a good sign that he wasn't on crutches, but it unfortunately doesn't 100% exclude something like an ACL tear. So bottom line with all this is there really is no clear and obvious mechanism that we can see from this play. Sports medicine might seem pretty straightforward when we see clear things like ankle sprains, obvious ACL tears, but it's actually pretty nuanced and far more complex. And so situations like this where there's really no clear and obvious mechanism, that's where we rely on our physical exam as we still do when we see the mechanism. I guarantee the medical staff has a pretty good idea of what is actually going on in Jaws knee right now, just based on their exam alone. Unfortunately, we can't exclude any thing here. Sometimes these freak injuries like ACL tears happen in positions that really don't seem to make sense for them tearing. It's certainly more concerning when a player is ruled out as quickly as Jaw was in these situations, but there's nothing about this that makes me confident one way or the other to say he's definitely done for the year or he'll be back next game. I hope this was still educational to kind of talk through some of these things, talk about some of the biomechanics and the positions we think about that lead to different injuries, and in the end to just be honest that it's really not always 100% obvious what we see just watching the footage. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below and until next time we'll see you later.